I heard that you guys were moving into a condominium. My son told me about it. Oh, yeah, we've been looking at one for a while now, and we finally decided to move into it. You better be thankful that my son is such a good guy. I feel so bad. He must have worked his butt off to make all that money to move into those rooms. It makes me tear up even thinking about what he must have gone through. I guess that it's true that there's light at the end of the tunnel. My son finally seeing the light after working so hard. Yes, I think so too. It feels like a dream still. We've had no one to lay up against when it came to finances. It's been a long journey, starting from a one-bedroom home in the middle of nowhere out in the country. Are you implying something right now? It feels like you're blaming me for not helping you guys out and resenting me because of it. No, not at all. Of course, I'd be lying if I said that I'm not jealous of those newlywed couples who get help from their parents so they can move into a nice house. But we're just happy about the fact that you're here beside us without any complications with your help. Is that so? I feel like I had to fish that out of you, but I'll believe it as you said. You're almost making it sound like you want me to move in with you guys. That's not exactly what I meant, but of course we'd be happy to have you over anytime. Wow, look at you get startled by what I just said. Is it that scary that I might come live with you guys? Mason's my only son. I don't have any other children other than him. And as his wife, you've never thought about the day that I'll come to live with you guys due to getting older? The more I get older, the more I lose my energy. Do you not feel bad that I'm starting to suffer with just being alive? My honest feelings are that I want to come live with you guys. Get some help with living for the rest of my life. See you guys be good kids toward me, and enjoy being in the presence of my grandchildren. Helen, you're only 65. There's nothing wrong with your health as of now. Don't you think that it's a little too early to be talking about us taking you in? You are sounding a little condescending with your words. Don't you feel it yourself? Do I need to be sick and old to move in with my son? You already don't want me to live with you guys when I'm still healthy and able to move around on my feet by myself. How could I be so sure that you'd want to take me in with my son if I got sick and so old that I can't even move on my own? Am I wrong about this? I can already hear you brainstorming and rolling around trying to figure something out so that you won't have to let me live with you guys. That's not what I'm doing right now. It's just not easy to add another person to the family because we haven't done that since day one. The reason why we moved over here is that we needed a bigger house. The kids are getting older and older. After they hit puberty, they've been being headstrong about wanting their rooms. So I had to give each of them their own room. There aren't any other rooms left open for you to move in. Be quiet. In what world do people not have the same problems that you do? Do you need to come up with all these excuses and say this and that all because you don't want me to come live with you guys? Can you not be a little more open-minded and just accept that your mother-in-law wants to come live with you? What I don't understand is why you're so nosy about what I want to do with my son. Is it wrong that a mother wants to come live with her son in his house? What a disgrace! I wonder if people born in your generation all go to the same school to learn how to talk back to their elders. They think their elders are a joke and have no respect for them these days. It's so shameful to watch. I'm trying to explain to you what the situation is looking like and why it's a little difficult for you to move in. But if you're just going to disregard and ignore whatever I say, what am I supposed to do? You're going as far as to insult me, make me look like some person who doesn't care about people who need some help. Also, it's not just your son's house. It's also the wives' and the children's house, too. I'll try to talk about it with Mason and the kids and see what they think. I'll text you back. Make sure you raise those children right and teach them manners and good morals. 
You think you'll stay young forever, don't you? But don't get it wrong. The next thing you know, as soon as you get caught up, you'll find out that you've become an old grandma. Don't be lazy with raising my grandchildren right and keep an eye on them. Do you understand? I'm an ordinary woman who's been married for the past 20 years. My husband and I have two kids, one in high school and the other in middle school. When I first got married, I was afraid of my mother-in-law because she's always been like a tiger, fierce and stubborn. I couldn't even make eye contact with her back then. Whenever there would be important holidays like Thanksgiving, I'd have my firstborn in my arms and the other on my back, making food and preparing for the holidays. I'd do the same for Helen's birthdays too. Not only that, but she'd make me show up twice every single week and help her clean around the house, make food and do the laundry. There were many days when she'd make me hand wash the laundry, including her underwear. I thought that was what everybody did back then, and I felt bad that Helen had to be widowed at a fairly young age because my father-in-law passed away early on in my marriage. I tried my best to do everything in her favor so that she won't fall into depression or feel lonely after his death. However, my children grew more and more as time passed by, and when that happened, my husband and I decided that it was best for me to start working because the expenses were becoming bigger and bigger. I asked Helen if she could babysit them just for the time being that I'm at work, but she refused my request on the spot. She told me, you had those kids so you take care of them. Are you in your right mind to ask your old mother-in-law to babysit two kids? She openly showed that she didn't want to help me out with that, but I let it slide because I tried to understand where she was coming from. After all, everyone has their problems in their lives. Whenever I think about those days when I would work at a factory all day while taking care of two children, it makes me tear up. Even though Helen has been pretty unhelpful in that aspect, I still wanted to show my gratitude to her and send her $1,000 to her bank account every month. When she would tell me that she was sick or somewhere hurts her body, I'd throw everything aside and take her to the hospital and keep her company. But now that I don't want her to move in with us into her home, she wants to forget about everything that she did to me and the things that I did for her and make me look like the bad daughter-in-law. As I was thinking about how to deal with this, I came back home from work one day to find that Helen had moved into her house with all of her stuff in her hand. Mason, when you got off work, can you come straight back home? Your mom told me that you've given her permission to move into our house. Is this true? She's here now. Well, what was I supposed to tell her? I can't say no to her moving in when she's old and weak. You should have at least talked about it with me. What am I supposed to do with her when she just comes into our home all unexpectedly? Why are you talking like that? It's as if she bombarded our home or something. Is this how you talk about your mother-in-law? There are only three rooms in this house. We use one of them, and Evie and Jonah use the other two. Where is she going to sleep? Then just make Jonah and Evie share the rooms together. If they use one of the rooms together and have my mom use the other, what's the big deal? How can you make two siblings, already in their teenage years, share a room? They're too big now to be sharing a room. Then what do you want me to do about it? Just have mom sleep in the living room for tonight then. And you're fine with letting an elderly person sleep in the living room? How about we let her sleep in our room for tonight? We can sleep in the living room. Hell no, I can't sleep on that couch. Just tell mom to sleep on the couch in the living room. I'm busy right now, so stop bugging me, and I'll see you later at home. See you. Mason! Helen, can you please open this door? I know you're inside the house. Why did you change the locks to the door? I don't think I need to explain to you how rude and ridiculous that is. I changed it to not have you inside of the house. Don't you get it? What are you talking about? Why can't I go inside of my own house with my own free will? Whose house are you calling this? This is my son's house that he bought with his money. 
You've been able to live like a queen or whatever, thanks to my son working like a slave out there. And you wanted to have the audacity of making your mother-in-law sleep in the living room? I have never heard of such a thing happening. You do me dirty like that and want to come back into the house? No, I don't approve of that at all. Get out of here. Also, I need you to get a divorce from my son. I can't live with a wretch like you. You treated me like a peasant, and I don't appreciate that. I have no business dealing with a bug like you, so get out of my sight. I get that you're upset and angry at me, but this is way too much. How can you say something like that? I don't think you're starting to catch dementia at that age, so what is going on with you? I've had enough, and lived enough. Besides, my kids are already in high school and middle school. I'm not going to tear up and cry when you yell at me anymore. I'm not that same daughter-in-law that said yes, ma'am, if you told me to get out of the house like I used to. It's unbelievable that you'd act out like this just because you had to sleep in the living room for one night. It's astonishing. What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to make you sleep with my husband in our room? What's so wrong with that? Is it that weird that a mom sleeps with her son in the same bed as him? Is there a law saying that I can't do that? Also, do you think that I'm being like this because you made me sleep in the living room last night? I've never thought of you as my daughter-in-law. Not once, ever since 20 years ago when you got married to Mason. What did you do for me until now? You've never given me anything more expensive than $200 on my birthday. And for my 60th birthday, you gave me $3,000 and called it a day. Other people get to go on trips and travel the world because their son and their daughter-in-law do them justice. But you've done nothing like that for me. You've never even done or given me anything worthwhile. I've never gone traveling like that in my whole life either. If you wanted to, shouldn't you make the money yourself to do that? When Mason and I got married, you were just 45. You haven't worked a single day as far as I know ever since. I've given you $1,000 each month even though my family's also struggling. Why are you dismissing that part? Everybody does that for their in-laws. Don't act like you're doing me a huge favor. Anyway, I stand by what I said. I can't live with you anymore, so get divorced from Mason and get out of this house. There can only be one breadwinner in the household, and there can't be more than one woman in the kitchen. There can't be two suns up in the sky, so you get out of this house. I'm going to enjoy my life with my grandchildren, which are our bloodline, so dismiss yourself while you are permitted to. I don't think I want to do that. What did you just say? I was the one that made most of the money to move into this house. It was the result of my going to the factory and working for the last 16 years. I didn't spend any money on anything that wasn't needed. This house is under my name, which I bought with my own money. How can you tell the owner of the house to leave? What? Why are you claiming that this house is yours? Mason told me that the house was under his name. I'm sure of it. I guess he wanted to show off since he's the man or whatever, and you took it in just as he said it. I'm going to repeat myself one more time, but I bought this house with my money. Mason only helped out with a small portion of it. Now you're just flat out lying. How much money could you have made working at a factory to get into a condominium? My son is the one that goes to work at a big company and makes the big bucks. There's no way that it was you that made the money, so stop lying and making a fool out of yourself. Your son is all bark and no talk. He's no more or less than that. When he gets his paycheck, all he contributes to the family is $500, and he even makes me give you the $1,000 out of my paycheck. I must be the only wife in this entire world who's never even seen a picture of her husband's paycheck statement. I didn't want to get divorced because I didn't want my kids to become fatherless. I made all of the money to get the kids their clothes to wear, food to eat, and supplies to buy for school. I saved up every little penny that I could to get this house. Do you get it now? Is that true? 
Well, then where did all of that money that Mason makes go to? Why are you asking me that? Go ahead and ask the greatest son alive in existence where he put all that money. I asked him if he could chip in just $1,000, but he refused right off the bat and said he has no money saved up at all. I don't understand how you raised him, but he has no idea what saving and budgeting are. I want to ask you what happened on that part. There's no way that's true. Mason is the smartest and the most deep, thoughtful person that I know. There were many times that I wanted to leave this useless man, but I let it slide because of her kids. But now it's different. I'm glad that you brought it up. If you want me to get divorced from him, then so be it. I'll agree to get a divorce with him, so please kindly hold your son's hand and get out of my house. What did you just say? Is this how you talk to your mother-in-law? Where am I supposed to go anyway? I don't care about that. If you want to go live in the streets or find a shelter, go ahead and find one. Once Mason and I get divorced, you'll be nothing but just some old granny on the streets. So I'll call you just that. You selfish and psychopathic woman. Stop acting as if you rule over me because you don't anymore at least. Take your belongings and leave. If you don't want to end up in jail and eat slop for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Please, get out of my house now. Wait, wait just a minute, June. I don't understand what's going on. This is not what I expected was going to happen. I think there might be some misunderstanding going on. How can you get divorced from Mason? You have two kids with each other. Don't you think that's a little too hasty? Can't you see how difficult it is to live and work as a single woman with two kids? Just look at me! I've struggled so much after your father-in-law passed away. I think I got a little too full of myself because I wanted to live in a nice condo in a big room. I understand that I overstepped my place a little. So, could you forgive me this one time? I'll take my stuff and go back to my house now. So, please don't get divorced from Mason. No, I don't think so. Mason has been of no help ever since the beginning. It doesn't matter, and it never did if he was present or not. The kids are pretty much all grown enough to understand what business we have going on over here, and I'm sure that they'll understand where I'm coming from. I'm not afraid of anything. I'll give your son back to you. So have fun with him and live a beautiful life. After everything that happened, I got divorced from Mason and even got custody of both of my kids. Mason refused to get a divorce with me and tried his best to stay inside of the house, but I asked him to quit being an embarrassment to our kids. Evie and Jonah even got on him about how he should just let mom go. He's already done enough to have put mom through a hard time. He seemed to give up when he heard his own children's disappointment towards him and went ahead to get a divorce from me. He went back and started living with Helen, but not even a month later I got a call from Helen about how he would only give her $300 a month to live off of. He was using the rest of the money for his good. Lord knows what he's doing with that money. She got tired of him very quickly and asked me to get remarried to him and take him back in. However, I was stern with her and refused to get remarried to Mason. I mean, at the end of the day, who'd want to take in a man that not even his mother wants to take in? Either way, now that I got rid of the two most stressful factors in my life, I've been able to enjoy the freedom that I've gained back. I'm living a very peaceful and ordinary life with my two kids, working hard as usual. Will, are you finished with work yet for the day? What do you want for dinner tonight? Is there anything you'd like me to make? Sorry, Hannah. Something came up. I've got to work some overtime tonight. Don't worry about it. You don't need to make dinner for me. Oh, okay. Is it really that busy at your company? They've been making you work a lot of overtime lately. Luke really misses you. Pretty much. We're in the busy season right now. 
so there isn't much that I can do. Speaking of Luke, how is he doing? Did you already tuck him into bed for the night? No, he's actually still awake right now. But from the looks of it, it seems like he's going to crash out any second now. He can barely keep his eyes open. He was trying his best to stay up late in order to have some time to talk with his dad today, but... I don't think I'll be back until past his bedtime, so you should put him to bed for now. Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Thanks for letting me know. You'll have some time off from work this weekend, right, Will? Well, yeah. It is the weekend, after all. But I'm going to be going out together with my co-workers to play some golf with them this Saturday. So it turns out that Sunday is probably going to be the only day that I'll actually be at home. Huh? Playing golf with your co-workers? But I thought that you said you were going to go buy Luke a birthday present on Saturday. You didn't forget about that, did you? His birthday is coming up next week, right? He's already in third grade. Time has really flown by. He sure is growing up fast, huh? I know. But we've both been so busy with work these days. That's why we decided to put him in that after-school daycare program, didn't we? And so you were talking about getting him a children's phone, so he can use it to keep in touch with us. Ah, I completely forgot about that. My bad. But I think that would be something you two could go and do by yourselves, don't you agree? You don't exactly need me to be there with you and Luke for that, do you? But you're the one who said you wanted to come, since you were worried about how much the phone would cost. And it would be good for Luke, since he would finally get a chance to spend some time with his father. He was really looking forward to it. Can't you spare some time for him, Will? I know. I said I'm sorry. Oh, I have an idea. Hear me out. I could still go out with Luke on Friday, just the two of us. I'll take him to the park or something. How does that sound? Ah, oh, you always change the subject when the conversation gets inconvenient for you. That's a bad habit of yours, you know? Jeez. I get it, I get it. Sorry. Anyway, back to talking about Friday. How about I can take him out to play while you make the preparations for his birthday party? Yeah, that would work. I was going to throw together some food and get everything decorated to be ready for the celebration. It would be a big help if you could get Luke out of the house while I work on doing that. Are we going to get any other presents for him besides the phone for this year? Is there some sort of gift I could maybe pick up and buy while I'm outside with him on Friday? I feel like getting him an entire phone is already a pretty big present as it is. And Luke always talks about wanting one. Even if he weren't in the daycare program, I think it would still be the perfect gift. So you just take him to whichever place he wants to go to, alright? I'm sure he would enjoy getting to spend some quality father-son time with you. Much more than getting him another present. Okay, got it. I'll go ahead and do that with him on Friday then. So, let me off the hook just this once for Saturday, would you, Hannah? It's just going out for a little fun every once in a while, alright? Alright, fine. But you know I'm not that good at dealing with phones. Try to help me out if I get confused about something, okay? Alright, just let me know if anything comes up. Anyway, I'm going to get back to working now. Will, are you free? What's up? I'm at the store together with Luke to buy him his phone right now. But there are so many different types and brands that I have no clue about what we should get. What kind of phone do you think would be a good fit for him? Do you have any ideas? Ugh, you were going to get him a phone for kids to use, weren't you? So why don't you just stick with that? I don't see what's so hard about this for you. I know, but there's still so many choices, even just for children's phones. Sorry. And I heard from Luke's friends that some kids who are also around his age have normal phones instead. But that would be kind of scary with how many things normal phones let you do, don't you think? So I'm really having trouble making a decision. Help me out here. You're an adult, you know. Can't you think for yourself with this sort of stuff for once? You always come asking me about every little thing. You aren't a kid. I'm trying to have some time to myself and relax over here. Don't bug me so much. You're the one who said I could ask you for help if I get confused about something. 
So why are you being so mean about it right now? That is totally different from what you told me earlier. I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to say. It's not like I'm there shopping with you. What is it that you want me to do exactly? How could I help you decide if I'm not even there to see what options there are? That's true, but... You could at least give me a little advice about what type to buy, can't you? The phones that Luke's friends have probably let them be able to talk and text to each other with things like WhatsApp, right? Wouldn't it be good to get him a phone that would let him message his friends too? So you're saying that having too many restrictions might actually be a bad thing for him? But I have to wonder if that's really for the best. I don't know, Will. What if he comes across some weird website or forum? I just want to keep Luke safe from strangers online. You're able to set up web browsing restriction settings on basically any kind of phone they make these days. Plus, you could also set up location tracking to see where his phone is at if you ever feel worried about that. Just ask them to show you a phone that can easily do those sorts of things. There shouldn't be too much of a price difference for something like that, so just get him whichever one you want. No need to show me the price tag. Okay, that sounds easy enough. I'll go ahead and ask one of the store's employees to do that then. Thanks for the help, Will. Yeah, yeah. All right, is that all you needed? Nothing else I gotta help you out with? Because I have some people that are waiting for me to finish this up. Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you away from them then. You're going to be back home by tonight, though, won't you? Luke wants to talk to you about what you two are going to do tomorrow. So maybe you could come home a bit earlier today? Seriously. I have plans to go to the bar for some drinks with my buddies from work tonight. Oh, come on, Will. Surely you can make some time for your own son. It's his birthday tomorrow. I know you have work and friends, but can't you spare some more time for him? Please? I mean, I'm still going to take him out to spend time with me tomorrow. Isn't that already enough for him? Kids are so much work. You spoil him too much. How is spending time with your son spoiling him? Try to think of how Luke feels for once, would you? He just wants to be with you. You already barely spend any time with him as it is. He's still growing up. He needs his father. Ugh, fine, I get it. I'll come home early tonight if I feel like it. But don't hold it against me. Give me a bit of a break here, Hannah. Anyway, I'll see you later, I guess. Will, how are things going? Is Luke having fun with you? Yep, he is. You already gave him the phone you went and bought yesterday for his birthday, huh? You couldn't wait until the party? It's all he's been talking about since this morning. He's been glued to the thing for every second he has his hands on it. I don't blame him. He was there with me when we bought it, after all. He was so excited to have it. He wouldn't listen at all when I said I'd give it to him tomorrow, so I just let him have it. Even when I told him it was his bedtime, he still wanted to have it with him. But it seems like he's really happy with it. Oh, is that so? Looks to me like he's still learning how to do everything, though. Did you not teach him how to use it yet? I told him that you would teach him about it, but he was really impatient. He stayed up late again last night waiting for you to come home so he could ask you about it. But of course, you didn't get back until it was already past midnight. And you smelled of alcohol when you walked in the door. You were really drunk. Really, Hannah? I already apologized about that. Jeez. I'm spending time with Luke today, aren't I? You always have something to complain about. Yes, in fact, I do. By the way, where are you right now? Did you take Luke to the park he wanted to play at? Nah. He was starting to get bored of the park before noon even rolled around. Now he's spending time playing some games at the arcade right now. You know that huge shopping mall that's right near by the hospital? With the huge windows and all the flashing signs? The arcade is sort of situated inside of that building. Oh yes, I know that one. I remember now. He was telling me about how he wanted to go there with his friends from school a while ago. There's a lot of sketchy hotels if you go through the back alley near that area though. That's why I told him that I didn't want him to go there without an adult. Yeah, that's a good point. It's not good for a young kid to find out about those things. But he's with me today, so there's no need to worry about it. Cars can't even fit past that way, 
So it's not like we're going near there. Yeah, you're right. But I'm glad. It sounds like you and Luke are having fun. Yeah. And how are things going on your side? Are the preparations for the birthday party coming along smoothly? Yes. Everything is looking perfect. The house looks spotless, and the food is starting to smell really good in the oven. Your mother also said that they would come by the house to be at his party sometime in the evening. You two should be back by then, right? I think it should all be ready for when you guys arrive. Yeah, Luke and I should be getting back home by around 5 p.m. or so. If my parents get there before us, just keep them some company. Get them some drinks and snacks or something. I don't know. All right, I'll do that. You go ahead and get back to having fun with Luke now. See you later. Will? Where are you right now? Is Luke there with you? What's going on? What is it? I'm driving right now. Can we talk later? I don't really have time to reply at the moment. I'm sure it's not that important. I'm sitting in stop and go traffic. I can't be on my phone. I'll see you later. You're driving? But I can see that your car is parked at a hotel. It doesn't seem like you're driving to me. What's going on here, Will? What? What kind of nonsense is that supposed to mean? Do you hear yourself right now? Don't throw around wild accusations like that out of nowhere. It's not a wild accusation at all. You've been staying in the same place for a while now. It's been an hour and you're still there at that hotel. Okay, Hannah. You're acting totally crazy. You aren't even near me, so how would you possibly know something like that? Aren't you still at home? You have no idea where I am right now. Stop making things up just to start drama. I can see where you are, Will. Pa, huh? you can see me. From where? The phone's location tracking. Your car is showing up on the map, right next to a hotel. I've been looking at it for a while now, and you haven't moved an inch. What are you doing at a hotel at a time like this? Location tracking? Did you do something to my phone without asking me? What's wrong with you? Even for a married couple, that's a total invasion of privacy. You're insane. Not on your phone. It's on Luke's phone. He told me that he left his phone in your car when he got home a bit ago. I don't understand what's going on. And what do you mean by when he got home? Wait. Is Luke there with you? Yeah. Your mom is looking after him right now. Imagine the shock when Luke came back alone, in tears, while you're nowhere to be seen. He said that you had told him to wait in the car. But when you never came back, he got out and walked home by himself. How could you let a child off on his own like that? He didn't tell you anything else. Anything else? What do you mean? Luke. He didn't say anything to you besides that I told him to wait in the car, did he? What the hell sort of question is that? Aren't you worried about your son wandering off alone? Is there something that you don't want Luke to tell me? Why is that your concern? No, I mean, if he didn't say anything, then I guess that's fine. It's nothing you need to worry about. Nothing I need to worry about? Will, are you kidding me right now? You went to go have an affair with some random chick at a hotel while you were supposed to be spending time with your son. And you're telling his mother not to worry about that? You really think I'm having an affair? I just happened to meet someone I know. You know nothing about her. Plus, Luke is still in elementary school. The kid doesn't even know what the word affair means yet. How would he even be able to tell you about something like that? Luke didn't need to tell me anything. Anyone with common sense would know what's going on here. He said that you were approached by some woman he didn't recognize, and then you left and told him to stay in the car. But if you went into a hotel with her, then I don't see what more needs to be said. What else would you do in a hotel with another woman? You really are a terrible father. I hope you know that, Will. I mean, I didn't do anything with her, though. You didn't do anything with her? Are you serious right now? Then why are you prioritizing some other woman over your own damn son? The reason you told him to stay in the car was because you didn't want me to find out about her. Isn't that right? That's... 
Well, some things happened, and... Uh... Come on, Hannah. I'm sure you understand, don't you? No! I don't understand at all, Will! You get out of that hotel right this instant! We're going to have a talk about this. Your father and I will be waiting for you. I can't believe you would disappoint your son like this. If you have any excuses, save them for when you get here in person. You guys are back at home waiting for me, you mean. I'll come back as fast as I can, okay? But I might take a while. Give me a bit. And why is that? Are you escorting your mistress back home? You should be ashamed of yourself. What? No, I just... Obviously, it'll take some time to drive back, you know. That's all there is to it. Okay. Oh, there's no need for you to worry about making that trip. Because your father and I are both waiting right next to your car outside. Looks like you won't have to drive all the way back home to meet us. You mean, you're at my car? In the parking lot? That's right. So get out here right now. And don't think about trying to let your mistress get out of this scot free either. Luckily, she just happened to drop the key to her house inside of your car. If you want her to get that key back, then you'd both better come out of the hotel. Wait, Hannah. Hold on for a second. You're being totally unreasonable right now. You're the one who's being unreasonable. Now quit complaining and come meet us outside. Now! If it's true that nothing happened between the two of you, then there's no reason for you to get so worked up about it. Isn't that right? Yeah, but... Right? All right, then. We'll just be here waiting for you. Take your sweet time, cheater. Let's have a nice and civilized chat, shall we? I'm going to make sure that you regret ruining my precious son's birthday like this. After that, with a look of resignation on his face, Will and his mistress walked out of the hotel and arrived at his car where we were waiting to greet them. He couldn't come up with any excuses for the situation, so when his furious father and I confronted him, he soon confessed to committing the affair. Not only did he neglect his son to have said affair, he completely ruined the birthday party that his son was so eagerly looking forward to. Being witness to his father's wrath about the situation was a very frightening thing indeed. He's a man who you would never want to be on a bad side with. Obviously, I could never in a million years forgive Will for what he did to our family either, so I filed for a divorce as soon as everything was finished. I also had him and his mistress pay up for the emotional damages that their actions caused me, and for Luke as well. Between Will's affair and our divorce, in order to keep Luke from having bad memories from his birthday today, Will's parents, as well as my own parents, got together to throw him a real birthday party. Will was nowhere to be seen, of course. I don't believe that doing this alone will be able to completely heal Luke's experience from today, but it's still much better than doing nothing at all. Going forward, I want to keep giving Luke even more wonderful celebrations and keep doing as much as I can to give him better memories of his birthday.